Hey Pfingsters! So today I thought it would be nice to have another puzzle session. So I created a new account like three or four sessions ago. Um, a new account at my uh, page Pfingster.com for learning Python by solving code puzzles. And in today's video I'm just going to uh, proceed solving code puzzles. Maybe you learn something out of it. Uh, this is the idea at least that I share my thought processes while solving the code puzzles. Okay, so this puzzle is uh, pretty simple. Um, it's just a bit arithmetic. Uh, we have a variable x and we assign the result of um, some computation and of course you know you need to know the math uh, rule so let's start with um, everything within the parenthesis because parenthesis, parenthesis operator ha takes precedence over all other operators so therefore we first calculate 60 minus 20 is 40 divided by 4 is 10 and um, now you need to know that uh, this standard uh, division operator results in a float value not an integer value so the result is 10.0 and this i think this is maybe the the um, standard mistake that is done here that uh, they ignore that the result is a float value so on the right side right side of this equation we have uh, we have the value 10 so 10 um, 10.0 a float value so we um, add 100 to that so 50 times 2 is 100 it's an integer so we add an integer to a float and the result is a float so we have 110.0 which is a float value like right so this should be the result uh, let's get rid of this let's check if we were right yeah it was it was correct so congrats congratulations we have reached a new rank auto deduct, deduct. so each time you enter a new uh, ELO level, so so there are some uh, levels you over time increase your your rating, your ELO rating. This is the idea, of, the whole idea of the uh, things.com app. So you have you have an associated rating, and over time, as you solve more and more puzzles correctly, your ELO rating increases, and uh, you read you get more and more difficult puzzles, puzzles that match your current ELO rating. Okay, so by solving just by solving puzzles. You put yourself on the road to mastery and increase your skills over time. So check out the uh, Finkster Puzzle Lab, Finkster.com, and uh, yeah, you can do your own um, Let's Play Finkster sessions. Okay, and uh, let's maybe have a few more puzzles just for fun. So we have here a simple string operation. So we we have we can do multiplication on strings. If you have the string un u n and we multiply this by three, then th we basically we we create this string un un un. Okay, and um, then we have string concatenation. So we have the plus operator on this resulting string. So we have the uh, three characters I O I U M and we append these characters to our uh, to the result of this multiplication operation. So this is the output of the next puzzle. Let's check if we were correct. Okay, yes, congratulations, we already have this. Let's maybe refresh this side. Okay, and we have the next puzzle. Um, this puzzle is still pretty simple. It has ELO rating 1200. We have a list with one element. So this, I th the puzzle is is a bit tricky because um, you may know that. So you may know this Boolean um, evaluation here in the if condition. Um, we 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 like we only pass a list, and we basically we tell Python, okay, associate a Boolean value to a list object. And how? Why can we do this? Yeah, we can do this because each object in Python um, is associated has associated a Boolean value. Okay, so we associate a, so Python implicitly associates a Boolean value to each object in Python. And um, the empty list is associated the um, false, the Boolean value false, while all other lists that have at least one value is associated. Um, has associated the boolean value uh, true okay so all lists are true so basically here we check is the list empty if the list is not empty we go into the if branch otherwise if the list is empty we go into the else branch and um, this list it seems to be empty but it is actually not empty it, it contains one element which is the empty list so therefore the um, check if l so if the list is empty uh, returns true and we enter the if branch branch and we print true to the shell so let's check if our argument was correct yes okay the skills is improved each time they improve you get this uh, green feedback and it shows you how your elo rating increased 
So we have already like increased our elo rating by 40 points today. Uh, maybe let's have another puzzle, right? So three puzzles, I think it's a good, good um, number of puzzles for these for these kind of let's play Fingster sessions. Here we have a list with um, five values: one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five. We call it squares because it is why because it is the square numbers. These are the square numbers of um, one, two, three, four, and five. And um, now we simply print the first element of the list. So this basically tests your indexing skills. So um, if you have this this bracket notation here, and you pass, you use it on a list on a given list like the list squares, and you pass an integer into it, then you index the element at this position you have passed into the uh, bracket notation. Okay, so you it, this is called indexing. So we index. Um, the element with index 0 and the element with index 0 is just the first element of the list and um, the element with index 1 would be the second element in the list, the element with index 2 would be the third element and so on. So in so on a very general note the element with index i would be the i plus first element in the list. So we have always this shift um, because we start our indexing scheme with 0. So this is a source of so many problems. <laughs> I one day I just um, try to debug my code like for two or three days um, um, when I was a doctoral researcher in computer science um, I debugged my code for three days and then I realized it was just this indexing error that I started counting with index one uh, and, and I should have started to count with index zero. Okay so the first element in a list and also in a like in any iterable basically has index zero, also in a string for example. The first character in a string has index zero, not one. Um, good, so uh, let's print the result of the, f like the first element one and uh, our ELO rating has improved by 16 more points. Maybe let's have another one, it's just fun. Good, okay, so this is slicing. Slicing is very um, important operation in Python. Many of you will know it already, but I think it's still for uh, even for intermediate to advanced coders, it's interesting to always um, to always like recap how how this slicing pattern works, so that you can like you don't have to think about these type of code snippets anymore. Everything becomes subconscious. So this like master coders, they know the basics very well. They know the basics to the point where they don't have to think about the basics like slicing. They don't have to count or something like I mean it's. It all happens subconsciously. So they would look at this puzzle and immediately give you the response. So if you have to like figure things out, what is the start index, what is the end index, what, why is it included and so on, then you, you don't have the skills already of, the, of a master coder. So therefore it still makes sense to think about these, um, these puzzles. Okay, here we have a um, variable x. We assign the string universe to this variable and print the slice starting from index 2 and ending in index 4. And index 2, again we start counting with index 0, so the character u would be index 0, character n would be index 1, character i would be index 2. So we, so we, have, we start uh, with character i and uh, we have, we take all elements in the string starting, starting from index 2 ending in index 4. Index 4 would be the element e but e is not included in our uh, final slice because the end index is never included in a given slice. Okay, So here maybe if you don't know slicing maybe I should have told you. So um, slicing is this colon notation the first element before the colon is the start index, the second element after the colon is the end index and it takes all values in the sequence where you um, that you access. Yeah, So you can access not only one element like in indexing we have seen before but multiple values like a uh, whole slice or so. And um, here we have like two characters iv and let's submit this. Okay also correct. So we have experienced harder puzzles next. Our ELO rating has still incre increased and yeah, let's move on. And I think we will keep, we will, um, we will leave it for now. If you want to do your own um, Let's Play Fingster session, then uh, check out fingster.com now and visit the app, solve a few puzzles, it's fun. It will improve your skills and it will make you a master coder over time. Check it out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.